Now this week, Jeff Bozos pushed the human race one step closer to commercial spaceflight by launching a reusable rocket into orbit. And in the same week, Doug the Flat Earther told me that there was something wrong with me if I believed we lived on a spinning ball, and Ryan told me I was a moron if I still believed in the moon landing. So, one step forward, two steps back I suppose. But I don't suppose you can blame the Flat Earthers for lashing out. After all, in the events of the last few weeks, where one of the internet's largest Flat Earth leaders has left the Flat Earth cult after witnessing the 24-hour sun in Antarctica, Flat Earth needs to find a way to cope and respond. And that is really what this video is about, starting here. This YouTube channel here belongs to somebody called Flatzoid. He's a flat earther and he's not afraid to ask and answer the very biggest of questions. This week he decided to tell us what the sun was made of. And as a science teacher, I was incredibly excited to click on the stream and be educated. So what is the sun, guys? I don't know. I can tell you, bro. It's, a, it's an illumination from God. That's, what, that's all I could tell you. As for substance, for the dynamics of it, what it's made of, I haven't got a bloody clue. Like Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Yes, if you were going to do a live stream about what the sun was, maybe you should find out the answer to that question before you start streaming. But that's not how Flatzoid and his team roll. Here, we're going to see them progress their knowledge over the course of what was about 20 minutes. And they start by asking some pretty serious questions. God clearly states in the Bible that sun is not a star. So why are we calling it a star? It's a question that at some point in our lives, we've all pondered the answer to. And once you've started asking the important questions, it's important you know where to look for the answers. And of course, children's television is always the best starting point. Have you ever stopped and wondered what the sun is made of? And yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. And here in Flatzoid's stream, we had the honour of watching live how this form of education can fuel a passion and a wonder about the universe around us. It's so extremely hot that any ship would vaporise from the heat before it got anywhere near the sun's surface. Yeah. And that is how progress is made. It's how we go from saying this... As for substance, for the dynamics of it, what it's made of, I haven't got a bloody clue. Like to say in this. It's a perpetual nuclear explosion. Yeah, of course, we could tighten that language up to make it more accurate, but there's no doubt there that you've got to trust the process. It sure is working. Now, why is it important? Why is it important that we look at flat earth channels and highlight really just how silly and how, how pointless the whole thing is? Well, I showed you this fellow before, Jaron, that came back from Antarctica with a whole new world view, and he left the flat earth cult after seeing the 24 hour sun. This week, he's been receiving an awful lot of messages from his old subscribers whose lives haven't been going so well since he left the cult. I've gotten a lot of messages, so many messages this week, um, and it's kind of all over the board. I've got some people that are claiming their life is over, some people telling me I've left my wife or my husband, and now I don't know what to do with myself. That's not easy to listen to. And that is a reality when you have these extreme flat earth beliefs, you're going to be stuck down some kind of rabbit hole of paranoia and it's obviously going to have negative effects on your life and separate you in time from your family and friends. And it's good that Jaron is owning that and he's sticking around to try and help some of the people that maybe he's pushed further into that rabbit hole. I do have to respect him for that. But it does seem that the rest of the flat earth community are trying to perhaps undo Jaron's message. And rather than try and use science to do it, they're trying to use something a little bit more biblical. Mm. I don't panic because somebody saw a light in the sky. Oh. Yeah, I don't know either what that noise was all about. I just didn't want to be left out. I thought I'd join in. Now, at this point, you're either subscribed to me or not. And if you're not subscribed to me, let me convince you to hit that button. Because if you do hit that button, here is a list of ways in which your life will suddenly improve. Probably should have thought of those before I started this video. Just hit it anyway. Um, the guy you've just seen there was Pastor Dean Odell. And he is definitely a biblical flat earther. And he's not taking the scientific route. In fact, he's got no interest in debating the science whatsoever. I'm not even going to debate camera angles and no footprints in the snow where they were walking and all these weird anomalies. No, of course he's not interested. And as we'll see in this video, when you're a biblical flat earther, facts and science mean absolutely nothing because we can always fall back on saying stupid stuff like this. Why is everybody up in arms? 
See, one reason I've sat back and just watched all the hoopla about all this, because I'm like, I don't care if you see 15 suns in the sky and they do whirl about. God's word is true from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. And then you can go on to claim that the people that went to Antarctica to see the 24 hour sun are somehow in league with the devil. I'm not even going to say, I'm just going to say they went and they saw a light go around them in a circle that they thought was the sun or that they knew because they're Satanist, some of them, that Satan would be there to help them. Now, this idea of putting biblical stories in front of scientific evidence and facts when it comes to explaining the observations of the world around us isn't limited to just Pastor Dean Odell. Even Flatzoid, the guy we've seen as already being uh, a strong proponent of science and the scientific method, even he likes to put biblical ideas ahead of scientific facts. Here he is talking to a pastor about the final experiment, or TFE as he calls it. And the topic moves on to Will Duffy, the leader of the expedition. What you're saying now is exactly why I have an issue with this whole TFE thing and what Pastor Duffy stands for. Um, he's trying, he's literally playing the game the snake, you know, the serpent did in the Garden of Eden. He's, it's okay to be deceptive, you know, it's mm -hmm. not wrong. Yeah. And yes. I find big issues with that. And yes. it's oh, sad gosh. because he's teaching a flock. And I mean, you as a pastor, you know mm -hmm. that God takes things like that very seriously. Yes. Um, I mean, so we have to pray for Will Duffy, even though we absolutely. don't agree with him. Absolutely. He does yes. need prayer, guys. He needs yes. to repent yeah. and open his eyes that what he's doing is literally a seed from Satan. I'm sorry to say. Flatzoid not mincing his words there at all. Now, Will Duffy was the leader and funder of the final experiment. He spent an awful lot of his own money taking people down there so they could witness this sun for themselves and dig themselves out of a rabbit hole of paranoia. So I wonder how the good pastor believes that Will should be treated. Looks the, the punishment the punishment for this is <laughs> it's it's not good. Leading people astray no. is I, not it's not it doesn't end well. Now, the irony of a flat earth YouTube channel accusing somebody else of being misleading isn't lost on me at all. And it is, I suppose, ironic that it is coming from um, a, a religious channel as well. Now, not all flat earthers out there, it has to be said, are taking a religious approach to refute the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. One such channel belongs to a man called uh, Phuket Word, or as I like to call him, Gigantor, the tallest flat earther in the world. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Now, in recent years, Gigantor has grown so tall that he can't be filmed by a camera built by mere humans, so he now does most of his videos behind PowerPoint. And here he is talking about the final experiment, explaining that if the flat earth was as the model was presented with the Antarctic around the outside, then it certainly would be destructive to flat earth to see the 24-hour sun. However, he's got a simple fix. What if uh, it wasn't like that, but the map projection that we were presented with for Flat Earth was like this, putting Antarctica in the middle of the Flat Earth and saying this is how it works. And then you put a sun going around Antarctica like that, and this would appear to fit. So a trip to Antarctica in this case wouldn't prove anything. If this was our map, this would work fine and they'd have to be making a trip to the North Pole. Now, to be fair, he's not wrong with that. The only problem he's got is that all the Flat Earthers and everybody in existence already agreed before the trip to Antarctica that we could see the 24-hour sun around the North Pole. So thanks for trying anyway. But as I was reminded recently by Antonio Achilles Castro 4458, Phuket Word isn't the only person trying to come up with an alternative model to explain the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Joseph Hamvey is still developing and refining his fine model. But at least Antonio was polite and he thanked me gore posting my video. Well, Antonio, thank you so much gore posting your comment too. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at Joseph Hamby's recent developments. Well, first of all, Joseph took a bowl, turned it upside down and shone a torch into it. And this model absolutely perfectly predicts sunrises, sunsets, eclipses, circumpolar stars, night and day, the retrograde motion of planets, the opposite direction of star trails in the northern and southern hemispheres. This had it all. 
But that didn't explain Noah's flood. So what he did is he took a sphere and he filled it with water inside of a fish tank. And this perfectly, perfectly predicts the formation of the geological column. In fact, I can't think of one thing that this doesn't do correctly. Except it didn't predict the tide, so it comes out of the fish tank, the dome comes off the top, and we stick some invisible biblical electrodes into it, and now, with the salt water inside, we can see some kind of movement, and that is absolutely everything about the tides, perfectly predicted, without any questions remaining. Now, here's where I could use your help. Those models are far too sophisticated for me to poke any holes in. So if you could let me know in the comments section why they might not be absolutely perfect representations and explanations of what we see around us in the real world, then maybe, maybe I'll grow intellectually to the point where I can uh, make a video to debunk them. Until then, I want to turn my attention to the core of the Flat Earth community who are trying to claim that the final experiment, the Antarctic 24-hour sun footage, was somehow a hoax. It seems not to be jiving with the biblical side of the flat earth community who are just happy to just accept that uh, there is a 24 hour sun and God just did it. Here's Daniel Pratt, very definitely a biblical flat earther, pouring scorn upon those people claiming the 24 hour sun was indeed a hoax. But these people calling the hoax on the internet, the evidence you are bringing is the weakest I think I could see. I It, it is overwhelmingly underwhelming this evidence you're bringing that it was a hoax <laughs> you know i just i don't know maybe people are limiting god and think that they couldn't have their biblical model and somehow he couldn't produce a 24-hour sun in antarctica so it has to be a hoax i don't know and another example of what's becoming increasingly more obvious, and that is that Flat Earth never grew out of a desire mm -hmm. to carry out scientific experiments to explain the world around us. It sprang from a belief in a creator, and then any kind of scientific observation was, was shoehorned into that belief. And Daniel, he's not shy about saying the truth, that the most important thing to him when it comes to Flat Earth is finding God heartbroken and terrified for those that have been in the flat earth topic and haven't yet found Jesus out of it. Um, because without that, flat earth has done you absolutely no good. Um, so I pray for you. <clears throat> So with all that in mind, let's focus our attention now on the three main characters left in the Flat Earth Circus. We've got Mark Sargent, deep inside the rabbit hole, and Witsit gets it. Surely these three people will make it very clear that they are basing their belief in a Flat Earth on science and scientific observations, and not in some biblical fairy tale. Well, luckily for us, we have a clip here of all three of them on the same video call. And we start off with, deep inside the rabbit hole, a friend of Jaron, who is now no longer a Flat Earth saying this. They're having um, people on that say that they used to be flat earthers, but after TFE, they're no longer flat earthers. And no, I've never seen any of these people that you can obviously tell that they're they're lying. Um, but that's that's the narrative that they're pushing fake, you know, ex flat earthers now. Well, maybe deep inside the rabbit hole, if you'd spoken to your personal friend, Jeronism, since he came back from Antarctica and witnessed the 24 hour sun and left the flat earth cult, you might have heard him say something like this. If you are a flat earther or in the flat earth or following flat earthers, I'm just telling you, I've been in this for 10 years. It's going nowhere. Again, if you want to remain here for 10 years and get nowhere, you're in the right spot. Just be a flat earther. You will get nowhere. You will accomplish nothing. You'll lose more friends. You'll lose more family. The, the stupidity of flat earthers is astounding. Nobody believes anything. You don't have to believe anything when you're in flat earth. You don't have to believe anything because you don't have a model. We don't have a map. You just kind of just go through it. And if something ch comes up that doesn't match our worldview, we just kind of say it was fake and move on to the next thing and, and say, we, you know, water lies flat. I cannot associate myself with these people or consider them smart ever again. I don't want to be called a flat earther. I don't want to be associated with people who can't see reality in front of them. Every single person that I used to think was a good researcher from level earth observer to plain truth to don't sphere the truth to Eric Dubay to you name it they all turned out to be trash 
Now, if you've made it this far and you're a flat earther, then first of all, well done for putting up with it. Or, or maybe not well done. Maybe it's just that you can't figure out how to get the video off the screen. Um, both are probably equally likely. But if you have made it this far, then maybe think twice about accrediting Mark Sargent, Witsit Gets It, and Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole as being people that put scientific facts before a religious belief in the flat earth. I've taken some clips of the conversation they've had here and I've just knitted them together for you. Make of it what you will uh, and let me know in the comments. People forget, um, I think this place was built with an illusion in mind. Uh, you know, not that God was trying to trick us, but that we made it towards, no, you're not gonna figure it out that easy. I'm also very interested in figuring, or uh, like, really laying out that we need to address our limitations and being humble. The creator made something that you could never make it. You know, like just be humble and be like, this is amazing, this is incredible. The way that Flat Earth wins is by you being brave enough to just put yourself out there to have conversations with your friends and family, to try and um, push this narrative forward. That's what the mindset needs to shift to at this point, knowing that you have truth on your side and you have the creator on your side when you do that as far as you know who created this place and and where are we and who are we but those were the things that the flat side can help you answer they ask us like why do you have so much peace even though quote unquote you were wrong about the 24-hour sun it doesn't matter it's trying to peek into the mind of the creator and who are we to claim that we know exactly how this place works why not leave some wonder yeah for sure now, I'm not suggesting that Flat Earth is religious extremism. That would be going a little bit too far, but it certainly shares a lot of things in common with it. And when we have people that hold on to these extremely firm religious beliefs, then dismiss any science that doesn't gel with those beliefs, misrepresent the rest of the science, you know, that they think they can kind of squeeze into holes to, to fill their belief out, um, and then take that ignorance and that confirmation bias and put it to huge audiences on YouTube, then you get people being dragged down the rabbit hole. And remember, it can lead to things like this. I've gotten a lot of messages, so many messages this week. Um, and it's kind of all over the board. I've got some people that are claiming their life is over. Some people telling me I've left my wife or my husband and now I don't know what to do with myself. That's not easy to listen to. Now, with that in mind, there is a very, very interesting debate coming up at the debate con that Modern Day Debate are running. FTFE, or Fight the Flat Earth, is going to be debating, uh, debating a guy called Andrew Wilson. And Andrew Wilson has this belief that that following religious doctrine makes people a better person. It's better for their ethics, it's better for their morals, and FTFE is going to be providing the counter-argument that actually using science and, uh, and logical, objective thinking will create a better human being. It's a fascinating debate, and I think it links into this topic really, really well. I've actually put a link to it in the description, and I've pinned uh, the link in the comments. I would really urge anybody, if they can, to go and watch it, and it'll not be the first time I mention it. I'll be uh, promoting that through a series of short videos between now and the debate. Uh, it is going to be in the middle of February, so um, plenty of time to, to bookmark it in your calendar. Other than that, uh, I'm going to go. I will be back probably sooner than you think with a comments video, but until then, goodbye.